Good evening. This is the MSC TV Evening News. Southampton University hits the headlines today with rather an unusual event. Vandals broke into the main library yesterday and stole all the signposts and signs. Library guides were also destroyed. The head of the CID said tonight that no motive has yet been established. Confused library users staged a demonstration outside the building this afternoon because not enough staff were available to attend to their individual inquiries. We sent a camera team down to find out how they were coping without signs. Why is nobody going inside the library today? Have you seen inside the place? It's just like a, a rabbit warren in there. I mean, without a guide, it's just like Spaghetti Junction. No, those vandals are flipping thorough. No, you go in there today and you just never get out alive. Have you been inside this morning? Yes. And? I, I was looking for the science section, but all the signs were missing, so I got completely lost. Um, they, they'd even destroyed the three-dimensional model of the library, so I couldn't work it out from there. So you're completely lost? Totally lost, yes. Have your attention, please. We've just found the plans of the 3D model, so if you'd like to come in out of the cold, I'll explain how the library's laid out. <laughs> Right, can you all hear me at the back? This is, uh, this shows the library has five floors or levels. You've just come through the main entrance straight into level two. This diagram shows how the various subject collections are arranged on the different floors. As you can see, they're colour coded. Until we can get the signs replaced, we've put up small coloured arrows to help you get to the right place. Unfortunately, none of the floors is continuous right through the building, except for level four. So you need to look carefully at this picture to make sure which staircase works best for you. The main stairs are over there, and the link stairs are through these glass doors on the right. I'll leave these pictures here to help you find your way around. We've just heard the signs have been found. <laughs> Give us an hour to put them back and then everything will be back to normal. <laughs> Also in the news tonight, oh, a late item has just come in. Southampton University has just been told by the University Grants Committee to press on with plans for major redevelopment of its main library. Proposals include an extension to relieve overcrowding problems and a new central core housing stairs, a lift and cables to serve a new online computer catalogue. Computer terminals will eventually replace all the old catalogues, bringing the library right up to date. To accommodate the building works, all departments of the library will have to be moved at least once. Advance warning of a book move will be given, but during the building operations, library users are asked to look out for the signs like these to tell them the new location of the books that used to be there. Scenes like this will be commonplace, and in the interim period, it may well be a case of here today, gone tomorrow. The main headlines again. Vandals broke into Southampton University Library last night and stole all the signs, causing chaos today for staff and students. The University Grants Committee has just granted £2 million for improvements to Southampton University Library, including the installation of all the latest technology. And that's the end of tonight's news. Good night.
We all know why people use libraries, but to newcomers it's less apparent how libraries can be used. Every library fulfills the same function. It's a storehouse of information and a tool to be used in learning. However, each library has its own special combination of services, facilities, catalogues and layout. It's that combination of variables that often puzzles newcomers. That is, until they've got the measure of the place. The time spent reading a guide is never wasted. Whatever you're studying, knowing how to use the library can make all the difference to your work. When it comes down to it, there are three basic ways of tracking down a book in the library maze. You might use either a subject, an author, or a title as the basis of your search. Remember that the class mark or subject code is the master key to your success. We're going to follow three people through the main library to see how they cope with each of these approaches on their very first visit. Our teacher has a subject in mind. The businessman and author. And our researcher is looking for the title of a specific periodical. Your own library search will probably be a variation on one of these themes. Yes, you'll find it on the model on the left there. Thank you. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, education mode. Have a look at the plan. Ah, oh, there it is, back there by the entrance. Ah, the leaflet. Hmm. Ah, oh, I can't be bothered to read this. I don't really need it. Oh, the articles I'm looking for are in Scientific American. Ah, the microfiche over there should tell me where they are. Yeah, this will do. There we go. Periodicals catalog. S for scientific. Stick it in. Will focus a bit. And Bob's your uncle. Scientific American. Shelved per Q. I'd better note that down or else I'm bound to forget it. All I need to do now is find out where they keep the uh, Q periodicals. Better put this back first though. Few books are on level three. That's upstairs somewhere. Whew. Oh, this should be the third floor. Hang on a second. This is arts. Something funny going on here. Let's try the subject catalogue for children and books. I need a fresh approach for my lot. Same class mark as at school. Most schools and public libraries use the Dewey classification system, which is purely numerical. For example, subject swimming pools, class mark 725.7. Now I've got the class mark, I can use the class catalogue. 1950 means something more up to date. Did that notice say about 1980? Books acquired after 1980 and interim catalogues with, with yellow spines. New books in a new catalogue. Seems logical. Yeah, here we go. 
Children in Literature by John Warren Stewart, published in 1980. Wonderful. Now, where's my class mark then? Excuse me, sir. Oh, it's a drag. Oh, how do I get out of this? Okay, thanks. Oh, no, where's the ashtray? I should have a quick pump before I put it out. Yeah, so I suppose it makes sense all these books around. We don't want to catch fire, do we? Business and commerce section. I've only got half an hour to the conference. Ah, oh, leaflet. Now, does this give me the information I want? The director said I'm looking for a book by Moser under business and commerce. It's well designed. Hmm. Let's look at the back. Ah, business and commerce, level one at the back of the building. Good. I thought I was on level one now, though. Strange. Author, check the name catalog. This looks like it. Names in every drawer. Right, L. M must be around here, I think. Let's have a look down here. M, that's right. M, L, M. Oh, good grief. I've just been up them. Oh, Getting close. This must be it. What an attractive cover. Yeah. I like these. Plenty of imaginative stuff. He's cute. Now to get the book issued. M L M Ah, Moser, Klaus Adolf. Strange figure though. I wonder what that means. The card catalogue covers all books bought before the end of 1980. Books bought after 1980 are listed in the microfiche catalogues. There's no overlap between the two and it's easier to keep the files up to date, ready for complete computerization. I'd better make a note of that figure in case I need to refer to it later on. But 1968, that seems a bit out of date. I wonder if there's more up-to-date information on the microfiche, but where are they? Ah, oh, there they are, over there, good. Now, which one shall I use? Not this page. K L M, that's right. The Moses should be on here somewhere. Just put it in. Just the focus. <laughs> Moser. Ah, there's those figures again. 1982 edition. Great, that's what I want. Now, the leaflet said, level one is at the back of the building. If I came in through the front, I assume it's down here somewhere. Hello? Can I take that one, please? Have you got your card, please? No, I haven't got a card, but my letter said I could pick one up now. Are you next door or what? That's right. Could I have your name, please? Sir? This is Courts. Turn it. Well, when you go back, you can just 
clarified down the chute at the end into the blue box. Okay, that's handy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Right, that's good. Level one. Gracious, it's corridor. I wonder what these books are. Childbirth? No thanks. Whoops, sorry. I wish people would like that way they're going. Strange, can't find where the department is. No? Let's have a look through here. Social science is great, that's what I want. Heavens above, where on earth do I start with all these books? The leaflet said there's a local map at the entrance. Ah, there it is, great. Most academic libraries use the Library of Congress classification system. The class mark is alphanumerical two capital letters and a string of numbers. For example, JS49, TL242, or more complicatedly, HF3510.M2. But in this case, our businessman is looking for HM24. The floor plan lists only the pair of letters as a broad guide to show you where your book stack is on that floor level. Now that's just down here on the left. Yes, that's right. H G H E Ah, H M should belong here somewhere. Right, here are all the H M twenty four books. Let's just have a look down and see if I can find the survey of sampling methods by Moser. No, can't seem to find it here. Generally speaking, books in libraries are shelved from left to right along one shelf and from top to bottom of a single book stack before going on to the top shelf of the next book stack. Gracious, can't find it anywhere. I've got to go back now without the book I need. Oh, well, that's life, I suppose. Hope the director doesn't mind. This HM24 book has been misshelved among HM22s. Oh, what? Oh, I don't believe it. Back here again. Oh, oh I was over there all the time. It's easy when you read the signs. You ought to get there eventually. Ah, uh, floor plan, just what I need. Yeah, the current Q periodicals are just over. Uh, yeah, that's convenient. Let's see, it's the uh, February issue I want, because it's got that article on acid rain. Somewhere around here. There's New Scientist and... Ah, this is the one. All I need now is to find the bound volumes, the 1981 back issues. The floor plan said they're on my left somewhere. Down here, perhaps. Yeah, here we go. And there's the Scientific Americans. 1976, 77, 78, 79, 80. Oh no, they're missing. Well, I couldn't find them, so somebody must be using them. I'll give it five minutes and then go home. I'm sure I can't put around here forever. Ah, here we are. Excuse me, could I borrow these for a few minutes? Yeah, as long as, long as you bring them back. Ah, oh, cheers. Ah, oh, there's a 
a spot of luck. Whew, it's lucky I decided to have a good look round. Patience is the thing, really. To sum up, then, we've illustrated three basic routes through library catalogues. Subject, author, and title. The class mark is the key to the entire system of catalogues and guides. Once you've mastered it, you'll develop your own shortcuts. Our teacher was looking for a book on a particular subject, children's literature. She found her class mark in the Education Library catalogues, which used the Dewey classification system. Using this class mark, she located a suitable book and took it to the issue counter to borrow it. It's a good idea to check when the issue counter is open. And remember always to bring your borrower's card. Our businessman needed a book by a particular author. He searched the card index using the author's name, but could find only an out-of-date edition. More recent books are generally listed in the microfiche catalogues. Remember that the microfiche only lists books bought after 1980, so it's usually necessary to check both catalogues. Using the signs and floor plans, he went straight to the right shelf. However, he couldn't find his book because it had been carelessly misshelved. It's always worth having a quick look round. Our researcher already knew the title of the publication he was looking for, Scientific American. He knew all about library systems and quickly found the class mark and corresponding floor level. However, he was unfamiliar with the building and by ignoring the signs got totally lost. When he eventually found the right bookshelf, the volumes he wanted were missing. Periodicals can't be taken out of the library, and luckily for our researcher, they hadn't gone far. Patience does pay off, and understanding the system really is the formula for success. Mm -hmm.